welcome to another episode of Wellness Deconstructed. I'm your host, Sia Jaffer, and today we have a very special guest. I know I say that about all my guests because all of them are special. But today, our guest is a compassionate womb therapist. She helps individuals reconnect with their inner selves through the combination of movement and womb steaming. When she's not Im immersed in the world of healing, you can find her on her yoga mat, embracing the harmony of movement and breath or wandering through nature, finding solace and inspiration in the simple act of walking. Her joy lies in discovering new insights and treasures to enrich her life and practice, whether in the pages of a book or amidst the hidden gems of the world around her. And that is none other than Ahlam. Hi. Hi, Ahlam. Hi, Z. Welcome to my podcast. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Um, I, it, was, it was a dream to have you here because I've, I've been really wanting to explore wellness from the feminine energy aspect and I remember coming to you for the first time and I feel like I entered the world of feminine energy consciously and created conscious awareness around it after coming to your class for the first time. Oh, it's such a pleasure to hear. <laughs> <laughs> so um, why don't we start with you telling us a little bit about what is womb therapy? Okay, so womb therapy as a therapy is quite vast. What I work specifically is womb steaming. So mm. if you were to, um, if I was to answer the question of womb therapy, it could be anywhere from massages to womb talk to body movement, energy movement, etc. But what I do specifically is womb steaming, which okay. is basically healing um, individuals' uteruses by using herbs. So that's what I that's what I do. Nice. Yeah. So what so what does womb steaming help with? Helps with various things. It helps with painful periods, infertility. Um, relaxation, just feeling mm -hmm. a sense of embodiment with one's bodies. Um, and yeah, so sometimes we might feel a sense of longing for something. And so every time I, f I find that when my clients steam, they find a clarification, they find oh. some clarity. So it's, it's a way of sort of embodying into yourself and coming into yourself. Mm. Yeah. And so, so can you relate it to like exploring or connecting to the feminine energy in you? Absolutely, because you're connecting with the womb at the core. We're at the core um, of a woman's energy um, holder, if you would say. We call it womb bowl, meaning that's where energy stems from, that's where creativity stems from, that's where life comes from. Mm. In Arabic, we use the word rahim, which is like mercy, mm. um, and which is also an attribute of one of God's names. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's where love initiates. And so, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's really where, yeah. cool. Um, I love that it, it actually connects you to your origin yeah um, and that's where the feminine energy lies right yes. so how would womb steaming be used as a wellness therapy on a regular basis if you don't have any particular issues like painful periods and stuff yes so as a woman cycle so we, we we are on a 28 day cycle as a woman as as every woman goes through um so we're on the physical cycle um every woman where we um shed we go through a, a, a period of shedding we go through a period of creativity and i can go through i can go into that if you like um and so how it helps it helps with relaxation it helps with um you know, coming into yourself, it helps with um, your, if you feel, if you feel like you want to connect intimately to yourself, to mm. your significant other, that's also a, a modality that it can help with. Um, just like, just like we explore other modalities of healing, whether it's yoga, walking, um, you know, intentional movement, I think it's just a way to sort of sit with ourselves and connect with ourselves mm. on a very in our cellular level so you don't necessarily have to have issues that you are dealing with or currently present but it's just a way it's just it's just an invitation for you to mm. go deeper and explore in yourself yeah because i feel yeah. like as women we don't talk about these parts of our body yeah. often and it's so shamed upon or Absolutely. to talk about it even um, that we really don't have a connection with our sexual chakras or sexual yeah. organs of our body yeah. um, and I felt like doing the womb, womb steaming, which I call yoni steaming, and yeah. I'm not ashamed of to say that. Yeah. Um, it helped me connect back to that sensual parts of me and connect to my body and my mind, yeah. not my mind, but my body and my soul um, to, to that feminine energy inside of me. Yeah. So, so what is it? What, what is it that is so shameful about talking about these topics they don't get it yeah I don't understand either and as you've mentioned it is actually a mind heart body connection mm. and it does I think 
So we think of our heart as being our second brain and our you know, womb as being a, a second organ that also functions as very like, uh, that's where intuition lies and mm. you know, growth and creativity. And why is there shame around it? I think women, women are just suppressed. Women are suppressed by society, suppressed individually. And I think there's a level of fear mm. that people fear what a woman is capable of if she was to be you know, completely in herself. But I think, um, yeah, I, I don't know what the fear is, honestly. It could be, it could be culture, it could be religion that's yeah. been misinterpreted. Yeah. Because in most religion, you'd find that love is actually and a woman's empowerment and a woman's place in the world is very highly spoken of. Mm. Um, and I just think it's, um, I don't know if it's patriarchy, but there's various different factors for sure that suppress a woman's yeah. um, creativity and sexuality and sensuality. Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like um, a woman's intuition lies lies there yes and exploring it through doing through using modalities of healing your yeah. sexual chakra yeah it it invokes this this awakening yeah. of some sort yeah and i feel like the world is scared for that awakening yeah. of the feminine power absolutely um and i feel like it is so important for every woman whether whatever age they're at to be able to connect back to their sensuality to their sexuality yes and um and feel that power again and and awaken that intuition so that they're able to exercise it to the betterment of themselves and their world right yeah yep 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 and it doesn't necessarily mean that you know you now exercise it by you know exploring out there but it's just a sort of inner being and inner yeah. coming into yourself yeah. that you know like it's just an inner presence, I call it. It's yeah. just an inner presence and an inner knowing of the world around you and your, of yourself. And you then choose that. You just, you then allow individuals into that realm of yourself in the mm. whole sense of yourself. Yeah. So you don't seek that wholeness in, in everywhere else yeah. in other dimensions, you know it's already within. Yeah, like it's not a loud, no. loud um, pronounced thing, but it's just a feeling of being whole within you, within you. and complete and, and that speaks a lot as well like even if you're not loud and going out there and proclaiming it yeah it's just within you but that's it speaks for itself yeah right? yeah definitely yeah. and it can be loud depending on how every woman expresses herself honestly no there's mm. no judgment in this realm it True. can be loud it can be expressive it can be but it can also be subdued it can also be calm it can also be a sense of reassurance like i know me yeah i know this you know True. So, yeah. True. That's a very good way of looking at it. Like it can be either way. Whatever works for you, right? Whatever works. Do yeah. you? Yeah. That's my, you. Yoga, that's my yoga teacher says, do you? Yeah. That yeah. is so cool. So, when would you suggest doing womb steaming? Like, um, is there a particular part of the cycle that you should be doing it? Yes. Um, there's. I, so I. Rec I personally recommend if you're gonna. So I usually give women a 12-week period to okay. sort of come in. Come in. Analyze her cycles. Get to know herself through a rhythm of um, three cycles of um of a 20 day cycle so i would say either the best time is either before your period mm -hmm. after you've ovulated okay. or right after your period before your ovulation okay so if you're if you're looking to expect that month i wouldn't recommend women to steam during the during the cycle of their during the mm -hmm. period of their ovulation okay so for me the best time is either before your period or after your period so what, what's the reason behind that in case you conceive um so women who are pregnant or want to conceive it's better to um, not steam during that during that period of the ovulation in case you become pregnant. Yeah, no, but otherwise... Oh, like it's a full general? cleanse. It's a full cleanse. It cleanses everything. Mm. So you so, don't... So, so why do you recommend it in that phase, like after ovulation mm -hmm. or after period? After period is to just cleanse it all out. Yes. If there's anything like stuck yes. around there, right? Yes. Um, but what about post ovulation? Post ovulation is, so you've gone, so no, after, before period. Mm -hmm. So before period. So before okay. period, you come into your period sometimes with some pain, some mm. numbness, some, you know, heaviness. And you don't know what's really going on that month. You're like, oh, that could be a sign of stagnation, that you have stagnation in your system, that yeah. stagnation in your, um, in your uterus, etc. So what it does, it just cleanses. Mm. And so then when you do start your period, you have a full yeah, full cleanse, yeah. um, both physically and metaphorically and spiritually. And so the one after you've had that full cleanse, you can then um, steam right after right after your cycle as well, which again it will just give you a fuller cleanse. Yeah. And so when we start our periods, it shouldn't start with brown. Sometimes we we've normalised things like brown, 
you know, initial brown bleeding, sometimes dark brown to blackish bleeding, mm. that's heavy stagnation. Mm. That's, there's some things that aren't flowing properly. And so by inviting steaming, it just sort of cleanses that. It gets, you know, even scientifically speaking, our skin actually sheds better after our periods. Oh, wow. because, because we are on this 28 day cycle. And if we were to think of it as a um, seasonal, when you are on your period, if I can elaborate now, yeah, actually, course. if you when you are in the season of your period, you're coming into winter. What do people do mm. in winter? They hibernate, they moisturize their skin, they eat nourishing foods, warm foods. And so once you come out of winter, we go into spring and then what happens around us in spring? Things bloom, things blossom, mm. whereas in winter, things dampen a little bit. Leaves start to fall, trees start to wither, you know, so there's that sense of like inner your old self almost in a dying, in a releasing, in a ready to let go. And so when we are in that season, it's better to then use, use that climate to sort of go back into yourself, nourish yourself. Mm. That's not the time to start a business. That's not the time to initiate heavy conversations with loved ones, any house chores, whatever. That's not the time to do. That's just the time to retreat back into yourself. And then as you come out of that cycle, you go into your spring mm. and that's when you you know building right yeah, yeah that's when you sort of everything around you sort of comes into a natural bloom yeah. and then you go into summer and that's when you are most active everything's blooming there's a sense of vitality and vibrancy around you and that's when you that's the time then to do all your planning your holidays etc yeah. etc et um and then you come back into a slow winter yeah. a slow autumn and a slow you know and a winter and that's that's a cyclical cycle yeah i that love way. that and i i love cycle thinking i feel like it's been yeah. like the key to be able to perform well as a woman. Absolutely. Yeah. Because they know that a man functions or masculine energy functions on 24 hour cycle. Yes. Like, because they, they follow the cycle of the sun. Yeah. And us as women follow the cycle of moon, which yeah. is a 28 day cycle. Yeah. So we can't expect uh, ourselves to work day and night and, and then wake up the next day recharged again, like, <laughs> like how generally men do. Yeah. We have to work with our cycle and see what works for us based on where we are on our, on our, cycle. On our cycle, right? So it's so cool. I loved how we explained it with the seasons. Yeah. Um, and I always teach that to my clients as the key to be able to be a high performance woman, because then you are aligning with your body to be able to produce the best results. Absolutely. And then, and then retracting yourself back into your like comfort zone and back into your like your shell yeah. when you need to recharge yeah like you know th there was this book i don't know did i discuss that with you called red tent oh i, lo oh, I love the red tent yeah. i love that book <laughs> it's phenomenal yeah. and traditionally actually actually historically and traditionally women have retreated exactly. from tra from times of childbirth when a woman is on her cycle that women have actually traditionally retreated yeah. women have had less chores in society it took villages to raise individuals and women as well yeah. it, it was it wasn't women were raising other women women were sort of being the keeper of, of another mm -hmm. woman you know so now that we're in this fast-paced society where everyone in this is in this nuclear structure yeah. it doesn't function for our biological selves it may function um you know productively and you know societally but it doesn't function for us as individual beings yes, exactly. and so when a woman comes to me for example and she's stressed about not meeting her deadline or stressed about this i just simply ask her where are you in your cycle yeah. and so if she's well versed with that language then she'll say you know what i'm actually my i mean i'm nearing my winter i'm in my autumn season yeah. and i'm just like yeah just give yourself grace you know ask for help lean into your loved ones and mm -hmm. yeah yeah how it works so i always say like set your expectations of yourself based on the based on the phase of the cycle that you're in yeah. like don't don't force it on yourself when you're not supposed to be doing that because no. it's not going to work like that you're not going to be able to produce the results that you want if you're not working according to your cycle yeah. or even if you do it will not last for a long time it won't yeah you'll crash absolutely and, and a good place to start is with the first day of your cycle let's say you've entered your winter yeah. so that's without thinking about where i am in the cycle let me go ahead and count day one of your period is the is when your winter starts yeah. and some women have a cycle of four days three days just think of that seven day week cycle to be your your winter and some women don't even have their cycles as in um, when you go through perimenopause or menopause and you sometimes have an inconsistency of of cycle just think of just think yourself with the moon mm. is the moon present yes that's the first day okay mm. i'm gonna i'm gonna say take a minute in, in the nature just ground myself have warming foods have grounding foods in, in ayurveda they talk about having yeah. grounding foods um and then as you go on to your cycle have nour nourishing food vibrant foods light foods you know hydrating foods 
Yeah, yeah, I love that. I'm so glad it came up in our conversation. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I wanted to take you back to the womb steaming. Mm -hmm. um, what is the process of womb steaming mm -hmm. like? Can you can you tell our audience about that? Sure, sure. So an individual would come to me. Um, say, for example, she um, has just had a baby. Her, um, her womb was sort of carrying life. She was also going through multitudes of changes in herself and life. And so now, as soon as the baby um, so then maybe that's a complex example, but I'll go ahead and finish. So as soon as the baby comes out, there's a hollowness, depending on how the baby came out. Mm. Um, so had there been interventions in her childbirth? Did she go through um, interventions with medication? Was there a cesarean outcome? Or did she go through trauma in her birth? Was, is there now physical trauma that, that she's dealing with, mm. even though it was uh, a va vaginal birth? I don't like to call it natural birth. I like to call it cesarean or vaginal, because that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, and so... And so that's then she would come to me after say a month 40 days I, I tell individuals to give themselves the grace of 40 days and again it's it's historical text it's in ancient chinese sanskrit islam it's yes. for when a woman gives birth this notion of a woman can go back to work in two weeks it's absolutely absurd to me and so again without judging if a woman has the privilege or the advantage of having of having the ability to be within for 40 days, I highly encourage that. And so after 40 days, a woman would come to me, she'd come out of her, out of that space, um, and then she, we, we, would start, we would steam for six days in a row, just to fully cleanse the uterus, massage the uterus, give her belly binding. Um, you know what belly binding is, so the, to, to, to bind from her hips all the way under her bosom. Sort of give her that sense of holding because you've been carrying a baby and then all of a sudden as soon as the baby comes out you feel a sense of hollowness yeah, you, feel empty. you feel empty like your body's been serving this magnificent you know you were this magnificent vessel for god and it's the first time i say that you've rolled you've almost given you've been given insight into the role of god yeah. by creating this life by the grace of god and so now you have this emptiness in you and it's like oh you know i've served the purpose i've had this birth now what's my purpose? Mm. But it's a bigger purpose. And so now when a woman has a sense of support and sense of binding, she knows, okay, now I need to go back into myself, my family and community around me, mm. I will give the baby. And then you'll find that the milk will descend. Mm. The woman has no problem with her milk descending once she's rested and she steams and it's cleansing and it's nourishing and she has people encouraging her. Like you've done such a phenomenal job. You know, mm. you've raised this beautiful baby and she has a lot of skin to skin with that baby. And research suggests that, that those babies then grow up to be very confident babies. Relationships thrive as a result of having oh, help. Baby. Oh. <laughs> you're my baby. Of everything that I felt when I held Honestly, my baby. Oh, it's <laughs> such a miracle, honestly. Like, and we don't talk about the power of touch even mm. for a new mom. We think about, oh, touch should just be for them. For the baby, a baby should get skin to skin, and then she puts the baby down, and that's it. Then baby sleeping, and. And that's the time that families should then come to the mug, massage her feet, massage her shoulders, husband, give skin to skin to your wives. Just give, give them that presence of holding, mm. you know? And so that's the cases of postpartum. But for cases of periods where women have either missing periods, complicated periods, or they don't even know about their periods. So sometimes mm. I ask women, tell me about the quality of your periods. What does that mean? <laughs> the texture, the color, the, the smell, tell me. And they're like, I don't know. I don't look at it. I don't know. We're so, you know, we think of our periods to be a, such a com inconvenience to our lives. Oh, I start my period. I can't go on a holiday anymore. I can't do this anymore. Mm. I've have to cancel this plan, that cancel. But once you cycle sync, like you said, you plan your entire life around that cycle. So then you know, and your family knows, and your partners know that, you know what, I'm going, I'm, this week, because the week leading up to your period is actually very intense for women. Yeah. And so that's the time you have to consolidate, condense what you have to do, minimize, etc. And then day one, you're going into hi hi um, hibernation. Hibernation, yeah. You go into hibernation. And then, you know, some companies, some countries rather like um, Spain have given women weeks off for their period. Women get a couple of days to a week off in her cycle. That's amazing. To really, you know, sit and, you know, retreating herself and then you know now with the dynamics of work changing after the pandemic women can work from home yeah. even if it's just two days you can be yeah. in your bath and just work from home eat your soup and just you know just chill just yeah, chill, like, yeah. relax <laughs> yeah so how does it help women it helps just women just connecting back to themselves and just yeah. centering and just you know getting rid of that bustle there's no rush we're not rushing anywhere yeah. just in the moment yeah, yeah I love it, that. It. so when I came to you for the first yeah. time I wasn't because I had a concern. Yeah. But it was just 
that I wanted to take them that time to just step aside from all the noise in my brain and to just go back inside and yeah. connect to my core. Um, and it felt so good. Um, you also made us like, it was just not, it, it was a process. Yeah. Because I felt like we did stretches to open up the parts. Then we did, then we did the, was it before the steaming, steaming or after the steaming that we did the womb massage with was the oils? after, yeah. Yeah, that During was really after. cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the essential oils that use like help me calm down. Yeah. And like also this just touching my womb and massaging it. I'm like, whoa, I've never done this. Like, and this is, this is where I create life from. Yeah. And I've ignored that part of me for so long. Yeah. And so I was just so jazzed by my experience and how much that touch um, and giving attention to those parts of my body um, made me, how much they made me mindful of those parts and how much more connected I felt, like how, how much more loved I felt, that's the word, yeah, loved I felt by myself, not by anyone else. Yeah. Um, and that was game changing. Um, I feel like that, that awareness was, did a lot of good in my life after that time. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to know what is the process? Like what, like, you know, you took us through the whole journey of like stretching, then you had those tools, um, then you picked specific herbs for us based on our needs. So can you, can you take us through the actual process of what it's included? Yes, yes, I can absolutely do that. And thank you so much for sharing that. Because honestly, sometimes we look towards others to give us pleasure and sensation. Mm. And we don't tend to utilize our faculties when it comes to exploring the world around us, exploring the world within us. And so by inviting touch for ourselves, I really wanted us to sort of come into a place of self-holding, mm. self-honoring, but also self-exploring. And so our womb is a is, an, is a part of our body that really yearns to be touched. Because when we think about sensuality, even from the perspective of a partner, they just gravitate to a certain parts of the body. And it's like, but hold on, I'm a whole being, mm. I'm a whole entity, I'm a whole energy field. And it's not just sort of, let's just get to the core of it all. It's, let's explore, let's explore, you know? And so, um, yeah, thank you for sharing that with me. Um, so I usually host um, classes in groups. I, I prefer both the group and the individual simply because they each have their own pros and cons. And so when you came into my session, you were like, I'm going through a journey where I'm discovering my femininity. Help me. What do I do? <laughs> yeah. And so I was like, OK, you know, and so, you know, and that, and that was nice. And so um, we start off with sort of just first of all, just setting an intention with the class, moving our shoulders, softening our hips, softening our backs, all the areas in which we carry stress. So it was just releasing all of that. Another thing I encourage in my classes is also to release all the jewelry, makeup, you know, all the things that hold us. For example, our, you know, in, in intimate, intimate garments. So just take all of that off and wear your dirt. So you come into this beautiful gown that I intentionally wash fragrance, you know, so there's, there's a level of igniting of the senses that's mm. also involved. And so once we move and we do a little bit of yoga, a little bit of breathing, I sort of go to every woman. And some, sometimes I do this um, consult prior to the class. So a woman would tell me I'm going through this in my cycle and I'm going through this. And so I already have an idea of what each woman wants. And then I select herbs specifically. So for mm. you, it was a lot of roses. It was a lot of lavender. It was a lot of chamomile, things that are calming, things that will ignite your senses, a little bit of sand Sandalwood, so mm. sandalwood to smell, it wasn't the, the actual wood. Um, and yeah, so I would um, bring the herbs together in a, into an infused pot and then you sit and then you wear another layer mm. of a cloak, depending on if you are, so this, it's actually gonna go a bit deeper, but some women don't need the extra cloak because they're already, they have internal heat. Mm. So they're already, if you, if you're fam since you're familiar, they're already high in pita, yeah. they don't need an extra cloak. Um, but if a woman is vata, for example, she has um, the, the air yeah. element, yeah, that's too sort of out of balance. We sort of give her the other, the, the second layer of cloaking, just as a form of grounding and just so that it contains the heat. And it's a, if it's a kapha, they would benefit from that heat mm. and so yeah I look into that and then yeah we just you know sit in that and then there's silence sometimes I put a bit of music sometimes I encourage women to journal and they do because when we really as women have time for ourselves and every time I you know even though we're in Nairobi and we have the luxuries of you know having help and etc most women is like oh I'm busy 
can't do it, I'm busy. Yeah. And so, you know, when a woman comes into my class, I remind her, this is an hour and a half for yourself. Please take the time, etc. And so, yeah. Yeah, I love that the whole process is so, so complete. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and it leaves you so, so restful and so connected to your being. Um, so anyone watching this, if you're a woman, you got to try it out. But okay, I had a question. Okay. What about women that don't get period anymore? So if they're like in their perimenopausal or menopausal or post-menopausal phase. Okay, so um, what we find that there's a lot of myths going around menopause these days. And so women in the past would suffer menopause in silence almost. They mm. didn't talk about it. No one was giving them, the, no one was given the blueprint to sort of go and navigate mm. menopause. Neither was our cycles nor period. All we knew is that your period is coming between the ages of 13 to 15, get ready for it, here, here, here are some um, sanitary towels, etc. And it's the same, unfortunately, for women. And so now when a woman is going through her perimenopause or menopause, she's going into that phase of wisdom. Now she's collected all the knowledge that she has over the years. And now she's going into a new phase of her life. And sometimes with women, there's a lot of resistance mm. because there's a lot of discomforts that come up with yeah. um, perimenopause. And so um, the, the, this is why it's so paramount to really honor our cycles in this phase of our lives so that when we come to the to our um, perimenopausal menopausal phase it's not as intense with heat there's excessive heat there's this excessive discomfort there's changes in our bodies which is expected but really sort of rushes heat just extreme extreme discomforts and so with a woman going through menopause i have a cooling blend a mm. blend that's specifically just for pure coolness so with a woman that is going through menopause we use the heat intermittently we use cooling blends we don't put a cloak we have it in the garden mm. if she has access to a garden we have access to we do it in a balcony for example for my private clients who have access to air mm. so i encourage a lot of women to do milder things swimming things that aren't just gonna exacerbate the feeling of heat in their internal bodies so walking swimming connecting with their grandchildren friends girlfriends mm. coming in and just embracing that sense of like matriarch that role of like mm. giving advice you know and so yeah yeah like taking the senior role take the senior the, role yeah take it with and take, own it, and own it. Yeah. yeah so yeah that is so cool i love that yeah. um so where did womb steaming originate from is it like a cultural thing um traditional like or did it originate from like the Somali culture or was it in the ancient Ayurvedic culture because I learned it in my Ayurvedic certification yeah, too yeah um, but I in India when I was in India of course like it's considered a taboo to talk about anything like this so I'd never learned about it yeah so I was always curious to understand where did it come from okay so in research they call it an ancient practice and they have various countries um, mm. around the world that have practiced it for example it was practiced in kenya specifically in eastern kenya amongst the women of um, sudanese culture somali culture ethiopians they still have it so in ethiopian and sudanese culture they have an element of they have a thing called dukhan uh, mm. where they use um, so it's different for each region but they use wet wood they use sandalwood, they use wood from the earth. And for example, in Somalia as well, we used to use, my mom said that they used to use frankincense. Frankincense is grown in Somalia, so they used to use frankincense. Um, it was used in ancient China, Korea, Japan, wow. India. So it was just, it, it was an ancient practice that was sort of initiated by women for women, mm. hence why there isn't an extensive text around it. But yeah, it was, and it's it still, widespread, yeah. it was very widespread and it's still practiced in um, Korea, for example. Korea, oh, it's still wow. very much. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because practiced. in India, I've never heard anyone do it. But it's so, it was it's, so, but I guess India is, in India, I guess, where I grew up in, a, in, in an environment where we didn't speak about yeah. our feminine side in general. Yeah. Um, it was something that you had to just like shh about it. Of course, definitely. And colonization also has impacted mm. the way in which our history is told, the way in which it's captured and um, what's available to us as knowledge as well. When I gave birth and I told my mom about this, she was like, oh, I didn't know you'd be interested. Like, why did you not tell me that yeah. this was present in our culture? It's like, okay, I can do it now, you know, let's yeah. do it now. So this is, you know. So we're still, you know, we're, we're reclaiming. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Yeah. Also, I remember you were saying about the 40 day thing. Yeah. Um, I remember with my first child, Yeah. Um, my mom was like, no, you have to stay indoors for 40 days. You cannot leave. I'm like, hell no, mom, I'm not doing that. What's the logic behind these 40 days? Can you explain? And she's yeah. like, no. 
uh, we did this and it's supposed to be done like this. And then she said that, okay, you have to stay warm and all these things. But I'm like, I don't get it. I'm going out of the house. And yeah. so I was out of the house in like three weeks because I had to come back to Kenya. I was in India then. Oh my so it's like, I need to finish a lot before I get back home. Mm-hmm. Um, and then later afterwards, when I actually started my journey, mm. I'm like, wow, why did I not do that? I, like everything made sense then the 40 day yeah. thing I st- when I studied Ayurveda I actually understood the whole process of what a woman's body goes through mm. right after giving birth it needs time to rest and recuperate back into its its original form yeah um, and how much being warm and protecting yourself covering yourself is important how eating the nourishing food warm foods the soups yeah. everything is so important for your body how oiling your head like yeah. that is also such a good ritual that we don't know the importance of and like there's special warming herbs that you use in the oils to massage your head with it and keep it in for like 24 to 48 hours so it soothes your body calms the vata and like brings your body into balance the hormones into balance yeah so the second one i was like oh yeah Um, i'm just staying at home (laughs) for 40 days and not doing anything and luckily i had help i had the luxury of my mom being there my mother-in-law being there i had help and before giving birth this time i was prepared so i had like instructed my staff talk to my family and be like look i might go crazy because my hormones are going to act a certain way Um, but just hold space for me and let me go through the process until i come back to my to my balance Um, So I feel like being informed is so important Mm -hmm. to be able to take care of yourself that way and and, and to be able to follow these rituals and traditions that have that have been carried on for ages. But I feel like a lot of people are losing it now because of lack of information behind it, because these days everyone wants to know the reason behind it and what are the benefits of it right Mm -hmm. um so i feel like and that was one of the reasons i created this podcast be like we need to create awareness around why and what are the different aspects of wellness we need to take care of absolutely and honestly it brings tears to me because it brings so much sort of like sadness to me because we're so robbed of knowledge Mm. we're so robbed of um, the simple nature of will, of living in a state of equi- equi- equilibrium with, the, with with the environment around us. I remember this is almost a decade ago when I first gave birth to my child, my eldest. Um, my mom came to visit me, and I was like, "Mom, I can't be in the house. I really want to go out. I just I can't, I can't do this. I'm I'm getting cabin fever. I want to go out for a walk." She's like, "Halam, you might not want to do that. I really suggest that you stay indoors." And I said, "No, I'm going to go out." And so at the time we were living in like a 90s, 30s sort of old house that's been renovated into a two-story so we were living we were the top flat and I had to go down these stairs with my buggy because I'm not going to tell my mom to carry my buggy (laughs) for me so then I carried the buggy down and then she's carrying the baby just looking at me just letting me be because she really wants me to learn as well and I was like let's go mom what I forgot to do is wear leggings under my dress I went out in the afternoon with no covering of my knees And I'm telling you, I was bed bound for the next two weeks. Wow. I suffered and I will never do that again. So air, bringing air into your limbs, it's so, oh my goodness, it's it's so, yeah, it was was not fun. Yeah, (laughs) because your body goes through, it's almost like having a major surgery when you're giving birth, you know, like, and when the baby comes out, you're robbed of a lot of nutrients and a lot of, vitamins and minerals and your body is in a very delicate stage at that time and you don't realize because you don't see anything happening but insides there's like everything haywire so it's so important to take care of ourselves yeah Yeah. I love that so my last question to you would be Mm -hmm. after giving a wealth of information to our audience Mm -hmm. what is the next step that you think they should do if it's women and if it's men what do you think they should encourage their women to do Oh, so now that men have all this knowledge, I would hope that they would do better for their women. And whenever she is on her cycle, just to be extra, extra helpful, you know, attempt to make some soups, attempt to rest her, attempt to massage. If you don't know, you can learn. <laughs> you can learn. But as for women, I would say just um, find where you are in your cycle and mm. the good best place to start is when you're winter and young girls are also getting their periods a lot sooner Mm. than the traditionally expected ages so 
Um, with that, are we eating whole nourishing foods? Are we eating foods that are heavy in toxins and pesticides? Mm. So th those are the things I would I would encourage women to eat as pure and as whole as whole as possible. Mm. Meaning, is it is your meats pure, lean? Is mm. it um, no antibiotics, no chemicals, etc.? The foods that you're eating, is it pure? Um, mm. In in Arabic, they say tayyib. Like, is the food pure? And is it zabiha? Right? Is it like pure? Um, is it grown organically in the sun, you know? Mm. And we have, we have an abundance of that in Nairobi, so there's no excuse as to why we should be having fried foods. And yeah. those, are, those foods are delicious and they're nice, but they really wreak havoc on our systems and our bodies and our emotional health as well. Yeah. So I would say just keep it as pure as possible, as simple as possible, and as in tune with nature as, as possible. So eat whole foods yeah. and start with tracking your cycle. Yeah, and then always the best place to start is winter. Mm -hmm. And then just go into your hibernation. Yeah. That's so good. And rest when you need to rest. Rest right? whenever you need to rest. L listen to your body. And partners mm. really, they can play a very instrumental uh, role. role in that. Mm. And uh, also modeling that to our children. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I love that. Yeah. That is so good. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Before we end, yeah. um, we're going to play this um, quiz round that I call Rapid Fire with all my guests, so. which is um, a two minute timer. Um, I'll, I'll put a two minute timer and I'll ask you some quick questions. Sawa, sawa, let's go. Okay. I'm ready. What's your non negotiable wellness habit daily? Oh, alone time. I don't negotiate with that. I love that, my too. <laughs> uh, what's your life mantra? Oh, simplicity. Simple. Keep yeah. it simple. Nice. Yeah. Uh, what is the one piece of advice that you've received? that you really liked? Oh, uh, one piece of advice that I really loved is before I was getting married, I um, met this wonderful British lady and she was like, you know what, whatever you do in life, keep 10% back for yourself. Oh, that's so, so even cute. if I'm, you know, doing so much for my family, I keep that 10% back for myself. That's so good. Like prioritize yourself. Yeah. Don't give out too much of yourself. Right? Yeah. That's so amazing. 10%. What's your go-to stress relief activity? Walking, grounding, walking, grounding. Yeah. Um, What's your favorite type of workout? Pilates, just simple pole pole. Yeah. <laughs> just simple Pilates. Amazing. Yeah. What's your, what's the one wellness habit that you can't live without? I feel like I already know it. Oh, what is it? Walking, right? You said it's, you're addicted to walking. <laughs> I'm addicted. You told me before. No, I'm, I'm completely addicted to walking. <laughs> but if there's one wellness, um, I would say walking. Yeah, walking and steaming. Yeah. Yeah. Cardio or strength? Strength. Sitting on a chair or on a floor? Floor. Journaling on paper or on screen? paper sunrise hike or sunset yoga sunset yoga early bird or night owl early bird okay what's oh we're done perfect so what's <laughs> the last advice that you would leave our audience with again if oh so many so many things but if they were gonna just keep something back for yourself um have a sense of intrigue like just ha mystery keep that mystery for yourself mm. you know there's an element of mystery and femininity mm. that we sort of overly share with people, the people that have no right to have access to us. Yeah. I would say keep that back for yourself. That's good. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. I love that. I have no comments to share that. Share the surplus. I wanna, like, yeah. yeah, I want to like soak that in. Thank yeah. you so much. You're Thanks. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having that me. so good. <laughs> <laughs> I have a little present for you Aww. as... as an appreciation. Thank you so much. Asante Sana. Thank welcome. you guys. Hey ladies, so if you are in my self-care club, then Al Ahlam is going to be there answering your question and answer soon. And if you want to know more about what the self-care club is, then you'll find all the details in the description below. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Wellness Deconstructed. Remember to like, comment, subscribe and share because your support means everything to me. Until next time, keep prioritizing your well-being. Mm -hmm.